Today we're going to show you how to tack a piece of furniture. I'm using carpet tacks that I got at the hardware store and we'll be using those around the edge of the coffee sack that I have to cover the top. I've decided to go ahead and scrappy little stool that I bought for two dollars at a garage sale and we'll use some scrim which is a fancy word for gauze and it's pre-washed and we'll go ahead and put a skirt on with this so you'll get to see the whole process but in order to get to the part of tacking. I'm going to head and cut my scrim. This stuff is really wonky. Once you pre-wash it, it just really scrunches up and you have to pull it apart. The skirt that I need is about six inches, so we're gonna go ahead and give me seven and a half inches of, um, so we have enough for seams. We have to do a double fold seam for the hem and a single seam for the, the top of it where we're attaching it to the stool. This is like sewing water. So what you have to do is put your seams together, these are the selvages together, and then stretch the fabric and then sew the seam. I'm double folding this hem and pulling the fabric tight. And I will pull it as I sew the seam. Like I said, this is stuff is wonky. And so you'll have to kind of adjust it but it's gonna look great. And it, it's not a, an exact science when you sew this stuff. And once you put it on the stool, you'll see the difference. I used four widths of scrim um, sewn together and so you can see what I've done. I'm going to turn it right side out. I folded it in half. One side will be glued in this corner because we're splitting the two pieces in half. And make sure you don't have it twisted up. That never works well. And let me get this one. are different lengths we need to find the center of the fabric by pinching the fabric together tacked at each end and pulled out that will give us the center of where we will tack this piece and that's our center and that's our guide I quartered the sides of the stool one two three four so we can go ahead and measure it just like we did the corners so we can get the fabric in a good spot to start it and then we won't end up with one side too ruffled and the other side flat. So if you give yourself these starting points, then just like I did the corners, then we know how much to gather in each space. So this is how much we've got to gather. So I'm going to run my little bead of glue. And that way it's pretty even. And I just don't make rocket science out of it for Pete's sake. Just and if you want to be more accurate and take your time, that's good for you. I just have too many things to do. I got a cup of coffee to make. There we go. We'll do it all the way across. I bought some uh, polyester batting for a crib quilt and so it's high loft and I'm doubling it up and I'm going to go ahead and cut this the same size as the top of the little stool and then we'll hot glue this down also. Well it's a good thing the stool has a new life. Right here is the edge three quarter inch um, edge of the stool and that is where I will be hot gluing this piece of burlap that I've cut pretty close to um, size. I did leave myself a little extra. So I'm feeling where that three-quarter inch edge is 
and I'm gluing from the center and working my way all across from both sides and coming to the end. I glue the entire other side and I'm gluing this side. I always start in the middle, just like all the other videos I've shown you. Start in the middle. And I put a substantial amount of glue because I want that to go through that scrim or whatever fabric you use on the skirt. So I'm pulling it pretty tight and I'm pulling it out. A good gob. I do have some excess, but I'm going to clip that off as soon as I'm done gluing all this. Remember that batting is underneath there? And we've got to keep this pretty even. So take your time to do it. Make sure it's glued down. But this glue will keep the, the fabric from fraying and it'll keep it all laying down. It'll make it real easy to tack. But we'll do this side and then go all the way to the other edge. I start at the center and I work my way to the corner, making sure that it's all sticking down under here. Oh, that looks good. But when I get to the corner, I'm going to miter it. I'm pulling this around the corner, right here. Put some glue on it. And then this will be mitered like this and pulled nice and taut. I'm gonna put a bead there. And I'm also going to put a bead in between where that fold is. Don't burn your finger, that hurt. There we go. Start at the center, of course. We'll go all the way across, pull it nice and taut. Make sure that we're gluing underneath. Uh oh let's put a bead right there. Make sure it stays. Tuck that batting in there. I've got so many great grain sacks now. I just got my coffee sack. So this corners, you pull it real tight. We'll put a bead right there and then we'll fold it so this runs flush with the corner. I'll need another bead right up in there to join those fabrics together. And let's double check to make sure we get a bead right there. Then I'll trim this side off and I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. After looking at my stool I decided against the raw edge. I found this little trim I made. It's a half inch trim, a flat fold trim, cut on the bias and then it was top stitched right there. I surged that, but you could just go ahead and sew your fabric together and fold it over. Or go ahead and buy a bias or a burlap trim. Anyway, you can see this is half inch, and so I'm going to go ahead and fold this right here. That will be my top, and I'm going to go ahead and start tacking. And I'll begin in this corner. The bottom of this little flat fold flange is resting on the bottom. I was talking about that three quarter inch width is at the bottom of that. I'm going to go ahead and take another tack stretched across and get this corner. I mark my spots an inch apart and I'm just using a little tack hammer where I make my little marks. Tack, tack. I do believe I love this trim now that I'm looking at it. I accidentally knocked a head off of this darn thing and so my needle nose would not get up underneath this and these are jewelry needle nose they're really small so what I went ahead to do and got some wire cutters and pull it out because you don't want to go next to it because you want it to be in the accurate spot so just helpful him I'm folding this end piece in and this piece wraps around. Let me get it. There we go. Tuck that in. It is very thick. But once you get that tack on there, find yourself a long one. Oh, that's a good one. Put that in there. Very good. And then that second to the last tack in there where that spot is. And I don't think
think we even need to put any glue on that. I think that's going to be good. I feel it. I feel it.